Okay, uh, I think it's about time to start. What I'm talking about today is getting some kind of decent MIDI from Lily Pond. I had to do this for the Mobot Clarinet project that I reported on last year at uh, LCA. Uh, basically, we had uh, a robot that played the clarinet, and we used Lily Pond to generate the music for it. But Lily Pond MIDI sounds absolutely appalling. So, quickly, first, what's Mi Lily Pond? Lily Pond is a music typesetting program. It was originally coded and designed by Ham Wen and Jan. These people are uh, music musicians, primarily. And they got totally fed up with the quality of the typeset music that they had to perform from. The problem is that when you're in an orchestra pit, it's a bit dark. Or when you're in the local pub, it's a bit dark. So you've got to have really good quality music. And also, you're sort of, you, you've got this great big trombone, and you're sort of going out there. So the music's way about, about there. So you've got to be able to read your music in a dark environment when it's quite a long way away from you. And so they designed a typesetting program for music that would enable them to do this. And it does actually produce really nice music that's really easy to read. The problem with music is that it's not just dots on lines. There's an awful lot of other stuff involved, all kinds of expressive marks. What's more, depending on what music you've got, which period it comes from, which country it comes from, you interpret those dots on the lines differently. I'll show you one little example. This is a typical piece of clarinet music. Okay. So we've got the dots on the lines, right? We've got the, 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 the blah, 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 blah. We've also got all this other stuff. We've got the curvy lines and dots and uh, trills and turns and triplets and tempo markings and dynamics markings. That means to get louder and softer. Um, and it's not actually in an easy, explicit way that uh, a computer could understand. I mean, now just says, get a bit slower. How much slower? A musician would feel it and know how much slower to get. And then when he gets to our tempo, he would speed up again, but he probably wouldn't speed up to 90 again. He would speed up to whatever the orchestra who was accompanying him would, was going for. Because this, this, this is like a, um, one part out of a great big score that's from, a, from concerto. So, but if you just take this and plug it into Lily Bond, this is what it sounds like, if I can get, get a thingy up. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the wrong directory now. Uh, I can't spell. Um, I think this is the one. Can you hear that? It's very quiet. I'll just, I'll just bring up the mixer and make it get louder. Oh, it's as loud as it can be. It's plugged in. Uh, it's, on, it's on full here. So I don't know what's going on. Are you using pulse No. I'm just using straight outer. Straight outer out of the earphone socket. Um, what I can do. I'll just play it again. Ah, wrong, wrong one. Was that better? Could you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But that's not what's written there. A, a real musician wouldn't play it that way. So what are you going to do to make it sound right? Because what we've got here, right, is these little dots here mean play that note shorter than it's written. I mean, normally you play notes shorter than they're written. Um, if I can get this thing working. Can you see that? If you've got four notes like that in a 4-4 four, four thing, you divide your bar up into four sections, say, and you don't play all of that, right? What CPE Bark said was play about half the length. So you'd play like that, then you'd have a gap, then you'd play like that, and you'd have another gap. You'd play like that, and you'd have another gap, right? And if you mark it with a staccato, you play it really, really briefly. As time goes on, people have lengthened those notes. So now staccato is about half, and 
we play these ones about uh, three quarters. And they've introduced a new mark, staccatissimo, which is like that, and that one there's about half now. Um, but if, you, if you're playing in uh, 16th century music, you play about half the time for one for a crotchet and uh, sorry, and um, as fast as you can for a staccato. If you're playing 19th century music, you play about three quarters of the time for a crotchet and uh, about half the time for staccato. And for staccatissimo, you go down to about an eighth of the note. So you, there's not just one one style fits all. That's what I'm trying to say. So how do we get better MIDI out of this thing? Oh, the other thing is, uh, let me get this back again. Get rid of that. Uh, let's say you've got some music that looks like this. How would you play that? Is it da, 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 da? No. If you're playing 17th century French music, or modern jazz, or some forms of Swedish folk music, you would play this as, um, as if it were written like that. Which means that divide the time of a crotchet into thirds, and play two thirds there and one third there. This is called inegalité if it's French music, or swing if it's jazz. And so even stuff that's notated really regularly has to be played irregularly. That's why it's called inegalité, which is French for inequality. How do you get that? How do you get it to work that? Because you've also got, only got to do that if this is on a beat. Now, if it's not on a beat, other rules apply. Third point. Ah. You'll notice up here, like there, oh hang on, there, and there, we've got bar lines. The bar lines show where the regular pulse of the music goes. In this case, we're in common time, which is 4-4 which means that the dominant beat comes on the first, at the beginning, and then there's a, sub, a subsidiary beat three crotchets in, there. So you, you should be playing that one slightly emphasised, and that one just a bit less emphasised, and that one emphasised, and then that one's the same point, so that one's emphasised too. How do, you, how do you do the emphasis? It's different for different imp- instruments. For instruments that can play louder and softer, you generally start those notes just a tad louder. So if you're on the clarinet, you'd tongue harder. If you're on the piano, you'd hit them just a little bit harder. For instruments that you can't change the volume of, like the recorder or the bagpipes, you've got to do something different. For the recorder, you either tongue differently, which makes it sound slightly different, it actually puts it slightly off note to start with. It's a little bit um, off pitch just at the very, very beginning, which... It's not off-pitch enough to sound objectionable, but it is off-pitch enough that you notice it and you can hear where the notes are. Or, instead of playing... uh, Let's go back to this one here. Instead of playing like that, all regularly, you'd lengthen that one a little bit. And lengthen that one a little bit too. Just enough that it sounds right. But the MIDI generator doesn't know about that. I can fix some of this stuff. Um, some of this stuff is relatively easy to fix. Uh, Lillipond uses guile as its extension language, so it basically uh, parses its input format and produces this great big long list of lists of lists. Um, and you can then run through those and modify the notes. So that's what I did. I, I, I went through and I looked for dots and slurs and uh, modify the lengths of the notes. I also looked for tempo markings and have some rules of thumb as to how much slower or faster to get when you see vowel or accelerando or something. And I also remember the time before accelerando. So when it says R tempo or tempo one, you can go back to the previous speed. And if you do that with this piece, it sounds more like this. Uh, Let's see. You hear? Sound more like music? Pardon? Oh, I'll turn the mic on and do it again. That sounds a lot more like a real music, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, we still haven't got it right. 
The, the other problem is that an awful lot of these marks, I mean, none of the ones on this particular example, but an awful lot of them are just marks. There's, a, there's a, an escape in Lillipond to say, um, attached to this note, this textual annotation. And that textual annotation could be anything. And I still haven't worked out how to solve that problem because if it's just a textual annotation, it could be appalling. What I'm going to do now, if I can get away from... Uh, uh, where, where have I put it? How do I get out of this thing? Ah, kill, kill, kill. I know. Killed. Did I give it up? No. There. Ah. What I want to do is show you some other music. Just to see how it work, bad it gets. Uh, I can't spell. Olivia Messiaen wrote some really beautiful music for the clarinet. And uh, I want to show you a, a bit from his quartets for the end of time uh, called Abime les Oiseaux, which means the, the uh, pit of birds. He wrote this while he was in a prison of war camp after the, during the Second World War. Uh, and he was um, pretty uh, upset about things. Um, I'm going to move that down so I can see what I'm doing. Where's, where's my thing? Bring it onto my screen. Ah, here we go. Um, When you get things like um, there, there, desolé, means lost or lonely. How, how, you do, how do you render that in MIDI output? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And this one here, without pressure, progressive and strong. What's more, it's in French. How can I teach Lily Pond to, to speak French? The, the other one that I'm having real difficulty with is uh, things like uh, this accelerando, this, this um, Get, get louder thing. It's on this great big long note. I mean, we're going at one quaver is 44. So 44 quavers to the minute is the speed we're going at. It's really slow. And Lily Pond only changes the MIDI volume control at note boundaries. So this sounds like me. Uh, it's appalling. And, and same here. You, you get this really uh, things. I'll, I'll play this for you after it's gone through my Articulate script so you can see, see how, it, how it sounds. Um, uh, I don't know whether you'll like it or not. Uh, and I hope you can hear it too. Where's the mouth? I don't even know where the thing is on this thing. This is after the articulate script, so you've got the separation at the, at the phrase boundaries. It's very slow. We're there now. and so on. But when you get to here, you'll hear there's no change in volume, and there should be. And then it gets really quiet for the next note. And now it's going to get even quieter. And now for the PPPP, it gets louder again when it shouldn't. Because what's meant to happen is that's meant to end on a PPPP. And then it gets really much louder when it gets to here. And louder again. And now we should be up to forte. Anyway, that's enough of that. But do you, you, you see some of the problems involved in trying to get decent MIDI output from this stuff? I think that's one of the reasons why uh, so often when you hear computer-aided generated MIDI, it's either rock tunes where it doesn't really matter because there isn't any expression anyway and people want a really strict beat, or it sounds appalling. And yeah, the, the, the articulate script goes some way, but there's an awful lot more to do. Um, my main problems at the moment are trying to add swing, this, this inequality stuff, uh, fixing the um, 
crescendo and decrescendo on a single note, uh, and trying to make that work even for instruments where it doesn't make sense. So for a piano, once you've hit the note, it doesn't get louder or softer. For an organ, it depends which register you're in. If you're in the swell, swell box, then you've got a pedal, you can make it louder and softer. If it's from, from any of the other registers, it doesn't get louder or softer. It's just whatever note you, whatever, whatever it comes out is, is what it comes out. So you need to have some knowledge of which instrument as to whether you can adjust the MIDI control volume up and down. Um, that's another issue with Lily Pond. It doesn't use the velocity channel for, for each note. It uses a, a separate volume channel, um, which is good from the point of view of theoretically we should be able to do this stuff. But uh, in practice, instruments sound different depending on how loudly you play them. And a decent synthesizer will know that. And so if you give it a higher velocity, it will change the tone. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't do that. Exactly. Exactly. And you need to be able to do that, too. Uh, I mean, even the, the, the volume control channel is also per note. Um, it's per track. It's per track. Yeah. And yeah. um, um, we generally put one voice note per track. Anyway, there's only one more thing to do, if I can get this out of there. Uh, CD to... Uh, um, which is tell you where to get the, the code. <coughs> Give it a chance. La -de -da -de -da -de -da -de -da -da. Go through this to where I was before. Yeah. Um, this is how I rewrite it, by the way. I just uh, shorten the note and put an up the rest in between. It, it, it's, it's a very, very simple process. Um, and uh, of course, I expand the trills and the turns. But if I go back there, that tells you where to get Lily Pond. Oh, hang on, let me go back in. Uh, www.lilypond.org has the um, source code and a really, really good manual. You will need to read the manual if you want to use Lily Pond. It is not a WYSIWYG program. It's like tech, right? Similar complexity. Uh, it, it takes a, a text-based input language and produces beautiful music out the other end. So you will need to read the manual. Fortunately, the manual is really good. Uh, and that is where to get the articulate script and wrapper program to make Lilypon produce better MIDI output. Okay, any questions? Yeah? Why not merge upstream? Um, I've been trying to. Cool. Yeah? Pardon? The, the question is, why, why don't I merge upstream? And the answer is, I'm in the process of trying to. Um, it's difficult to merge upstream because all of my stuff is written in Scheme. It doesn't actually touch any of the core parts of the Lily Pond at all, and there isn't actually a place to put it in the tool street. Uh, yeah? Um, for a start, um, I found a similar problem, and I got around it by putting the MIDI pickup on my guitar and using it to articulate the, um, the notes. That you, uh, and so one, one option is, what I'm thinking is, what is the purpose of playing MIDI files in the first place? Is it so you've got pro, um, computer-generated program background music, or is it... If there was some sort of like way that the users could have the articulation themselves, then that, in a sense it's not really playing, it's like you know, block, um, block game. Okay. Um, the, the question is, uh, what is the purpose of this, and um, would it be possible for, for users to add their own articulation? Is that the idea? Yeah, as a learning experience or as a... I'm just curious from that angle. It's not okay. I'm not sure about the second part of your question, but the first part of the question, I use the, um, the, the this process... For, for three purposes. One, to drive our robot clarinet, yeah. to make it sound better and to win competitions. Secondly, there's a lot of orchestral music out there, and I play clarinet, and I can't afford to hire an orchestra. So I grab the, the, the orchestral parts, chop out the clarinet part, and then I've got a backing track for my clarinet playing. Yeah. And it sounds a lot better if it sounds right. Absolutely. Yeah, so they're my two reasons for doing it. Oh, awesome. Okay, another question up there? Yeah. Um, um, the question is, would it, wouldn't it be easy just to render the uh, Lillipop file to MIDI and then use a different sequencer? I'm using Timidity as the sequencer anyway. Um, the problem is that the information isn't there. There's information in there that just isn't in the MIDI file. Yeah. So, for example, the swells, um, you can simulate by um, a, a series of uh, volume controls. 
Sure, but where would you get... You could simulate swells by series of volume controls, yes. Where would you get them from? Okay. Um, it was much simpler for me to use the extension language to modify the, the lily pond input than it would be to get it to try and generate MIDI outside. Um, it would be a far more complex problem to do it that way. Yeah, another question over there? Yeah, no, I've got, um, to me, this seems, I think, music's leading the way here because once you've got, in a sense, um, the, the computer stuff is digital, and I don't mean digital as a bits of white, so I mean digital as discrete statements. And music is intensely analog and goes down to deep analogness of emotions and things like that. And as as we um, turn the um, our, our, our tools and techniques into mechanical processes, at some stage to interface with human living, we have to be able to put expression and emotion and things like that, which is music leading the way. Now, one of the way what you've got here is a huge amount of culture of all different genres and things like that, which which you need to keep so much information. I was saying you need to crowdsource it. You need to crowdsource whole piles of um, music geeks and things around the world who can go, oh, this is a, collect their little favourite annotations and then describe them mm -hmm. and then collect them and crowd and then pick which ones are the, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the question is, why don't we get everybody to do it? Uh, and to, to, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I should point out there's, a, there's a, a project at the University of Finland, I think it is, called uh, Directional Music Keys, which is uh, a collection of common lisp programs that take a, a MIDI file and then rewrite it in a style. So you can choose Mozart or Bach or Charlie Parker. <laughs> and uh, it will rewrite stuff and add swing or uh, inner parts or whatever to make it sound like that. But it, it, it's only as good as the input you start with. And my, what I'm trying to do is take stuff that's sheet music, basically, that some composer's written down, and go from there to a MIDI such that I can understand it. And that means I would need to be able to get decent printed output as well. Yeah. Yeah. One here. I'm going to suggest a completely opposite approach, um, where instead of getting everyone in the world to describe their favorite articulation and their favorite style, um, could you not take, uh, this is not a simple matter of a few lines of code or nothing, but could you take recordings and scores and uh, extract from the reverse engineering? Know, yeah. Yeah. The way that this particular piece of clarinet is a uh, trill to turn um, and the dynamics, you can just learn from human players. Yep. Uh, trying to think how you would actually describe them. Uh, yeah. Um, way. That's actually, the question is why can't you reverse engineer it from real recordings? Uh, there's actually quite a lot of work happening on that kind of thing at the University of New South Wales. There's a few people in the music department who are using our clarinet and analyzing um, the way real people play music, that they work with the uh, Sydney Symphony Orchestra and the soloists from there, that they work on how, how people learn music and how people do th stuff like that, which is related to that. The, the thing that's missing is any automatic an analysis tool that could then uh, add the articulations back in from the score. Uh, and let's face it, if you've got the score, if you've got, if you've got some uh, um, recording, why would you want to be generating MIDI in the first place? Because then you can learn the rules for how to play ah, different pieces. Okay, again, you can learn the rules, yeah, okay. That's even a more complicated problem. That's machine learning. Ooh! Uh, any more questions? I think we're almost out of time. Yep. Okay. It's afternoon tea time. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs>